Hi and welcome back to Sansamed. In this introductory video to nephrology, we'll talk about the basic anatomy and histology of the kidney and we'll leave the physiology for coming videos. But first thing first, what is nephrology? Well, it is simply the study of the nephron and nephron in Greek means kidney. And so conversely, the nephron is the basic and structural unit of the kidney. Now here's some for you trivia back home. The kidney has a higher blood flow than the brain, liver, and the heart. And you know the main function of the kidney is to filter the blood. So it does so in a rate of 125 milliliters a minute. This amounts to approximately 180 liters a day. Now that's a lot of blood getting filtered, of which it reabsorbs 99%. Imagine if it was the opposite, and only 1% ends up as urine. Now this amounts to approximately 1.5 liters, but obviously this number varies since it all depends on how much you drink. Now each kidney weighs approximately 150 grams and is about 11 centimeters long. And that concludes the trivia portion of this discussion. Now to the anatomy. Now where is the kidney? Well, the kidney is located in the abdominal cavity. It is a retroperitoneal structure. Simply what that means is that it is behind the peritoneum. Now peritoneum, for those of you who are unsure of what it is, it's a serous membrane that covers some of the abdominal structure organs, such as the stomach. Now, you see that there's a bit of asymmetry between the right kidney and the left kidney. Now, this asymmetry comes from the fact that the right kidney is just below the liver, so the liver kind of pushes it down, whilst the left kidney is just beneath the diaphragm. So the left kidney then ranges from the approximately the 10th thoracic vertebra down to the third lumbar vertebra and the right kidney is a little bit further down. Now, the kidney itself is enclosed in a capsule, and this capsule is it's a fibrous capsule. Now, outside of this capsule, we will have a, a little bit of fat tissue, and this is called the perinephric fat. Now, peri means uh, around. Outside of that, you will have the renal fascia, and if you really want to be fancy, you can call it the renal fascia of Gerota. But renal fascia is enough for me. And outside of that, you will have the paranephric fat. And obviously, outside of that, you will have the peritoneum itself. Now, one structure that we do not see here is the adrenal glands. Adrenal glands produce certain hormones that are important for the body. And uh, they are located just above each kidney. So it should be around here and here. So let's do some macro structures. If we were to take the kidney and just cut it in half, uh, this is what we would see. This is how the cross section of a kidney looks like. And this white area up here, this is going to be your cortex. This is where your nephrons are going to be located. And this pink area here, this is your medulla. This is where your tubular structures is going to be. And you're going to see how the medulla forms a pyramidal shape structure. So you simply call it the renal pyramid. Now you see these lines that run through the cortex down to the med medulla. This is known as the renal columns. And uh, again, if you want to be fancy, you can call it the columns of Bertini. And simply what these columns are, are that there are tubular structures and vessels that run down to the medulla. So basically the premise is this, the filter starts up here in the cortex, it goes down to the medulla, and it gets collected in something known as the renal papilla. From there, it goes, it enters the minor calyx, and so this is a minor calyx here, and this is another minor calyx here. Now these minor calyxes will form something known as the major calyx, and from there it exits out the hilus as the renal pelvis, and enters the ureter, and from there is the urinary bladder. Now one thing to keep in mind here is that what is a lobe? What is a renal lobe? Well, this whole structure here, this is a renal lobe. So what supplies the kidney? Well, it's going to be the renal artery. And you know the renal artery is a branch of the abdominal aorta. And the logic follows is this. The renal artery enters the kidney in the hilum. And it goes up towards the lobe, so it changes its name. It changes to the interlobar arteries. And from there, it kind of arches around the kidney, so we call it the arcuate arteries. And the branches of the arcuate arteries are so small that we call these intralobular arteries. And from there, it enters the nephron or the renal corpuscular portion of the nephron, and so we call this the afferent arteriole. And the venous drainage is almost the same, basically the opposite. Now, what innovates 
the kidney. Well, the sympathetic innervation comes off the renal plexus, and the function of the renal plexus is to induce vasoconstriction. Now, what gives the renal plexus? It's going to be some branches that comes off the celiac and aortic uh, plexuses, as well as the branches of the lumbar and thoracic splanking curves. They cause vasoconstriction. And this vasoconstriction will lead to reduced renal blood flow, which in turn will increase the blood pressure. Now, sensory output from the kidney goes to the 10th and 11th thoracic vertebra. It is these dermatomes that cause that characteristic flank pain that you get with the kidney stone. So now you know why you have that pain. <laughs> All right. The microstructures of the kidney are very simple. You have a nephron. This is a nephron here. This whole thing is a nephron, and this whole thing is also a nephron. Now, nephrons simply consist of two structures. It consists of a renal corpuscle, which is this portion here, and a tubular structure, which is this portion here. The same thing goes here. Renal corpuscle and tubular structures. Now, there are two types of nephron. One is close to the medulla, so we call this juxta medullary nephron. You see, this is the medulla cortex, very close, juxta medullary nephron. One is more up in the cortex, so we call this a cortical nephron. Now, the renal corpuscle is where the action happens. This is where the blood comes, gets filtered in the glomerular capillaries, and exits out in the proximal convoluted tubules. Now, we'll talk about this when we discuss the physiology. But for now, I need you to keep one thing in mind. In order to drive the blood to go this way towards the proximal convoluted tubule, there's got to be a pressure here. And this pressure is essentially going to be caused by the fact that the afferent arterial is going to have a higher or larger diameter than the efferent arterial. This is the efferent arterial, so a much smaller diameter. And this will cause more blood to stay here, which in turn would increase the hydrostatic pressure. On the right here, what you see is a histological picture. Now, this is going to be your vascular pole. So this is where your afferent and efferent arterial is going to be. And this is going to be your urinary pole. That means that this is where your proximal convoluted tubule is going to be. This is your proximal convoluted tubules. And here's a picture of your distal convoluted tubules. This is going to be your macula densa cells here. So the renal tubules. The nephron consisted of two structures, the renal corpuscle and the renal tubules. The renal tubules follows as this. Now we got our filtered, and it entered the proximal convoluted tubules. Some stuff gets reabsorbed here, such as sodium, glucose, etc. And the rest of the filter goes through this loop. This loop is known as the loop of Henle. And it continues upwards, upwards, towards another structure known as the distal convoluted tubule. Just like the proximal, but it's distal this time. Then it enters the cortical uh, collecting ducts and the medullary collecting ducts and exits out as the renal papilla back into the minor calyxes and then the major calyxes and then the renal pelvis and then the ureter the histology of all of this is very simple all you need to know is that this thin segment of the loop of henley is going to be simple squamous and the rest of these structures are going to be cuboidal epithelium you see cuboidal 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 simple squamous and that concludes our anatomy and histology for the kidney. Now, looking at this picture, you should be able to explain what innervates the kidney, what supplies it, what drains it, and how a nephron is built up. Thank you for listening, and I hope to see you in the physiology video.